Hi everyone! Wow, that was just like a fine Disney property, and they're probably going to come after us and sue us. But it's Mark's Miniature Monday! Indeed it is. And what on earth is going on here? Today Mark? we have got not Razor Crest. Not Razor Crest. Not Razor Crest, yes. So you've painted up this fine looking not Razor Crest spaceship. Yeah. And you've done metals. We've done metals. So this wonderful. Uh, ship here has been painted up to represent or reflect the not razor crest. The, the not razor crest. Yeah. So we started off with a really high uh, gloss sheen, steel, aluminium, chrome type effect, and, and uh, you grubbed it. I've grubbed it. Do. I've grubbed it up big time. So the Mando's had a bit of an error, and he's, he's the not Mando. The not Mando. Not Mando has had a and it's not yeah. razor crest, and it's not Grogu. Yeah. they're all there. But they're not there. <laughs> They're not there. Um, but you've now covered it with paper and tape uh -huh. and things. What's that about? Okay, so what we're doing now is we're going to add on some stripes, some patterns, and uh, generally speaking, we've just masked out areas. So yeah. we've got all this paper here and masking tape. This paper primarily to protect the areas outside of the masked areas. And, uh, and then we've got some blue tack on the top as well, which is just to show how you can do you know, different shapes and using different uh, forms of masking as well. Yep. And uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, when it's all finished, you'll be able to see, we'll peel it back and it'll be nice and neat and tidy. Big reveal. There'll be some uh, wonderful stripes on there. Sure. The, 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 the question will be is whether or not I, I put on the, uh, the masking evenly. We do have a previous video that's about a simple masking mm. on a dozer, dozer blade. blade that you did and you did that with a sponge yes uh, the actual painting this yeah. paint application you're going to do with an airbrush yeah. so this is like the next level on yeah so i'm really just here to to blow my horn and then beckon in the not razor crest so now i'm kind of done and i'm gonna pass you over to mark on this fine miniature monday so yeah me and joe i'm gonna go bob into my studio and uh, get the camera rolling in there Before I got stuck in painting, I gave the mask in one final check. This is always worth doing. As I went to weather the yellow stripes, prior to applying any acrylic paint, I sprayed on a liberal layer of chipper medium. This stuff is great. It means that you can safely remove any additional layers of paint applied following it without damaging those layers beneath. The chipper medium was left to dry before I progressed to the next step. The stripes themselves, like on the real razor crest, are to be yellow. The first coat applied, again with an airbrush, was Vallejo Game Leather Brown. Two even coats of this were applied. The key to painting with an airbrush, as with a traditional bristle brush, is not to apply the paint too thickly, but to apply multiple coats, obviously waiting for the previous coat to have dried before applying the second or successive coats. Once the foundation layer was established, it was then time to make the yellow pop. To do this, I applied increasing lighter tones of yellow, first using Vallejo Game Yellow, and then Vallejo Game uh, Moon Yellow. I used these to gradually increase the intensity and brightness of the yellow, but I didn't want to go too bright, hence not applying any lighter tones to this. The raised areas were given additional coats of Moon Yellow to make it appear as if light was more readily hitting them. To create a smooth transition, paint was feathered on using the airbrush. You can see this technique in action here where I'm using short, controlled bursts. Possibly the most stress-inducing aspect of the project was the removal of the masking. The hope and worry is that the seal around the masking would have held and that the masking paper not adhered so strongly to the paint that it pulled away previously applied layers varnishing before applying the masking and a good primer can help mitigate for this. Thankfully, this all went to plan. A little yellow coming away on this project, however, would have not been catastrophic, as it's going to be weathered anyway. However, on a cleaner project, any unwanted chipping uh, could be tidied up with a brush or even remasked and again airbrushed. The blue tap masking, sadly, was not quite as successful as the paper masking, but as just mentioned, this was not a problem on this project. Possibly my favourite part of the hobby is paint chipping. 
this super simple and really great fun uh, technique can be used to really bring to life your miniatures. Using a clean brush, I liberally uh, brush clean water over the yellow paint. Rubbing the brush back and forth, I help the water penetrate the acrylic paint. The chipping fluid behind the yellow stop the water from penetrating any further. I use a cocktail stick to carefully target where the chips would be. This is much more controlled than simply continually rubbing the brush over the paint, which will eventually remove some paint, albeit in an uncontrolled, haphazard fashion. I kept doing this over all of the stripes until I was happy with the level of apparent wear and tear. I like to use reference images as a guide to help make the scratches appear more realistic. Genuinely, go look at the actual Razor Crest for, for some guidance on this. To make the belly of the ship appear scorched and burned from atmospheric re-entry and to tie the yellow stripes in within the underside, I applied small dots of Abteilung Starship Filth oil paint. Then using a saw edge brush from Ammo, this was gently feathered in long sweeping brush strokes to create blended, blended streaks. The key to this was being gentle with the brush. Ultimately. I did this all along the underside of the not razor crest, not worrying about the windows as they were to be painted last. The same process was then done to weather the stripes and tie uh, those in more effective with the top side of the ship. Here dots of rust enamel paint using an, enam uh, an ammo streaking brusher were applied and then feathered using an enamel thinner exactly as in the previous step. Again, the key was to be gentle. Add more of uh, the uh, rust paint if you want to go to town with the rust, uh, but ultimately I wanted to not go too crazy in this step. The final step was to paint the windows. I picked a blue tone as this contrasted nicely with the yellow stripes. Overall, this was a great fun project to work on using a host of enjoyable techniques. Really appreciate it if you let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed this video, if you gained any helpful hobby insight, remember to click like, subscribe, and hit the alert button as we have plenty more hobby content planned for the future. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.